right now we're going to go ahead and power up the gauge, calibrate the probe, and then we'll be prepared to take some measurements. So why don't we go ahead and do that by hitting our power button. We'll hold it down until the display lights up. As the display lights up, it leaves you with the single REF reference. That wants us to reference our probe. We have a little white arrow here, which is our reference position. So we're going to travel the gauge down and then up past that arrow. When we go up past that arrow, it's triggered the reference position and then it will prompt us to calibrate our probe. There's a little icon on the top of the display that will be blinking with the probe and that's asking us to calibrate our probe. From here, we'll drive our, our master block into the probe and we will engage in the downward direction, go up, and then we'll repeat the process. So as we engage downward, it'll zero out, drive it up, 98425, come back down to repeat the process, and finally finish on the top. If we leave the probe engaged, we will then see 0.98425, which is our master size. We are using a 25 millimeter master, which is 0.98425 of an inch. We also have 156 thousandths shown on the, dis on the display below the 98425, and that is the diameter of the probe we're using. When we're calibrating our probe, not only are we calculating the diameter of the probe, but we're also taking into consideration deflection of the probe. As you use a longer or a shorter probe, you may see more deflection. As you use a thinner shank, um, you may see more deflection as well. So we're able to compensate for that by calibrating our probe using the same measuring force that we're going to measure our parts with. That's going to give us the most accurate, accurate result possible. As we release that feature, as we release the probe, the probe icon disappears, and then we're ready to continue with some measurements.